Offering blood for the blood god. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys. Warhammer 40,000, the world eater's corn berserker. They relish their role as the Blood God's sacred destroyers, and their fanaticism is feared throughout the galaxy. None are safe from their unbound violence. Victims and ally will fall under the hacking blow of revving chain weapons. No matter how many lives they claim for the Skull Throne, it will never be enough to quench their bloodthirst hunger or appease the bite of the Butcher's nails. Despising those that serve as slainish. Before, of course, we get a closer look at the brand new Warhammer 40,000 World Eaters Corn Berserker. Let's grab the tape measure and see once again how tall the figure stands. I will also in a second bring in the other two figures that we've already had a look at, being the Ultramarines and the Space Wolves. But for right now, at least, you're looking at the Corn Berserker standing with the crown on top of his head about eight inches. In fact, actually, it's exactly eight inches in height. And that makes a figure that's 20 centimeters tall. As for those other two figures, bringing in now the Space Wolves Wolf Guard, they're about the same size. Now, you could say, though, the Space Wolf Wolf Guard does have a little bit of a higher reach just because, again, he's got that backpack attaching onto the back of his body. Don't worry, though, the World Eater will also have his own backpack will attach on in a moment. Recently, we also had a look at the brand new as well, Ultramarines Terminator, the much bigger and bulkier figure really of the three that we've looked at so far. Now, unfortunately, though, again, when we looked at the Ultramarines Terminator, the figure did have some somewhat loose joints in his shoulders. It doesn't seem as much to be the case when we're looking at the Corn Berserker here. Trading card, display stand, interchangeable hands, as well as the plasma pistol and chain axe are all the things that get packed along with the Corn Berserker. Backtracking a bit, first the figure comes included with a display stand. Looking at it, it'd be hard pressed to see any difference really between this one and the one that we get with all the other Warhammer 40,000 figures. Consistently, McFarlane still includes display stands, whether it be the Warhammer, whether it be the DC Multiverse, Spawn, Mortal Kombat, name any one of them. They're including display stands usually with all of their figures, unless the figures are pre posed and already attached onto their display stands. Like, for example, uh, the, well, recently, in fact, we've also looked at some movie maniacs. There are also ones that are permanently usually attached onto the display base. The benefit of these also, even though as a collector you end up maybe having a whole stack of these sitting around, but for other companies that are slacking perhaps when it comes to including display stands with their own figure lines, you can then usually use the ones that come with McFarlane Toys releases because they usually are the same universally sized pegs. Moving that off to the side, boy, that was long-winded. The figure also comes included with a trading card. The trading card does feature the two accessories that get packed along with this figure being the chain axe and the plasma pistol. He's wielding both. The artwork, once again, is stunning on these. Bringing in the earlier looked at cards uh, on all of these, I haven't yet actually put them in my trading card sheets. But you can see, like, the Ultramarines, Terminator, the Space Wolves, Wolf Guard, now meeting in the middle, the Corn Berserker, all come included with exquisite-looking cards and stunning-looking artwork. On the back, all of them feature, again, their unit, again, symbol or their logo, as well as the name of the, the group, the faction, as well as, again, a paragraph read. Ironically enough, Wolfguard seemed to have the shortest read, while Corn Berserker probably had the most, most meatiest of things to read. Don't worry, it was the thing I read at the beginning of this review. Now I will be putting these in trading card sheets as we take a little bit of a break away from the Warhammer 40,000. Love again that the fact that we are getting the trading cards that we are. The figure also comes included with a couple swappable hands. Now he has really one hand already for designated to hold while well, the chain acts. You could really use either one of these hands. Now the hands already on the ends of his forearms are ones that have trigger fingers. So if you didn't want to have one that looked a little bit more like one that would be holding a chain axe, for example, you just easily pop pop this one off and you can replace it with this one here. The figure also as well comes included with a dynamic hand. Not one that we really did get with the Ultramarines Terminator, but though the Space Wolves Wolf Guard also came included with some swappable hands as well. There isn't any unfortunate paint on here. I'm sure, I'm sure there could have been an opportunity where some of the spikes, for example, probably could have been painted in in silver. Other than that, though, the fact that they include extra additional hands always well appreciated. Now moving on, to, though, to the territory of weapons. First, the figure comes included with this plasma pistol. The plasma pistol at least does have some blue on the top. If not for that, it's pretty much an otherwise all-molded black plastic pistol. There's some chains down below, probably could have been an opportunity they could have painted that in, as well as there's some spikes on the end, also could have been an opportunity that they could have painted those in. Unfortunately, though, it's the only bit of coloring that we actually do get is the little coil of blue that's on the top of it. Because he already has trigger gripping hands on both sides, you can either have it on, well, this side or this, I mean, you can have it on either one if you want. The figure also as well comes include this chain axe. 
The chain axe, as you can see, does have the little spikes that it uh, kind of looks again like a chainsaw. I really like, though, the logo that they have sculpted on the side of this. There is also an opportunity that they added a little bit of coloring to an otherwise all dark gunmetal gray, painting the part of the handle here in black and painting the dividing section where it's not all just gunmetal alone. They painted this section here all in black as well, so it gives us a chance to see sort of more the, the cybernetic looking skull shape standing out. Really like the look of this axe. Uh, by the way, just to also bring in the axe that we did get with the Wolf Guard, just off to the side here, I'm going to bring in right now. Uh, definitely, it's a much bigger axe that gets packed along with the World Eaters. The Space Wolves have a much, not, I don't want to say an inferior axe, because it certainly does have some nice additional metallic blue paint that's added in there, but it's not as big of an axe as the one that comes included with the Berserker. And again, this can be attached into either one of his hands. There is also one accessory that's just off to the side. I don't know why, for what reasons unknown. I, I didn't actually uh, end up having it on display with the rest of the accessories, but the figure also comes included with a backpack. While I do like the look of the backpack, it is heavy. Well, it, heavy in at least the parameters of what a plastic piece would be of this size. It's pretty weighted, though. There's a lot of heavy, dense plastic here on the top. And unfortunately, I feel with the, the slotted peg that they provided here on the back of the backpack, I don't think it's long enough. I feel like it should have been a little bit longer. And why I say that, though, is if you take, though, the corn berserker and you spin this around, located on the back of his body is a little slot. This plugs in place, but I don't feel it plugs in well enough. A lot of times while I am moving the figure around, if I just happen to clip it, for example, I find the backpack falls off frequently. It's nicely sculpted for what it is. The colors are a little bit lighter, though, on this than they are for the rest of his body. The body itself is a little bit more of a darker red than what we get for the backpack, but the fact that we also do get ourselves a backpack is a nice touch. I just wish, though, it stayed better in place. I mean, as you can see, just I barely touched it. As you can see, it comes off way too easily. So again, when we are posing the figure, when we are looking again at the posability, I'm probably just going to do with the idea of just leaving the backpack off because I know I'm going to clip it. It's going to fall onto the ground and somebody in the background is going to laugh at me. I don't like to get laughed at. We're going to just though. Uh, by the way, though, uh, this whole time of talking about his accessories, I'm just going to put the backpack to the side. I will say, though, that the plastic that they use for these hands are really dense. So, like, getting his accessories in his hand, short of maybe just heating this up in hot water, you may have a harder time of getting him to wield the weapons. Something also, too, is because he has the spikes on the ends of his gauntlet, or the ends of his hand, every time you try to push anything into his hand, you end up just impressing the... the well, you're leaving an impression, literally and figuratively, as the spikes leave an impression in your skin. Uh, then, of course, we can also take ourselves the plasma pistol. And again, like this, just prying the plastic. I did heat this, honestly, with hot water, but with the whole time that I've been talking away, I do sometimes talk way too much. Uh, the plastic has cooled a little bit, but you can see, like, he holds, he successfully holds both. You can decide if you want to have him wielding both, or again, you can swap out one of the hands for the gestured hands instead, and only have him with the capabilities of wielding one. Whoosh, long-winded. Let's go ahead and remove those accessories. We'll put both to the side. Pardon my hairy arm, by the way. Getting, though, a closer look at the Corn Berserker. I'll tell you right away, this is my favorite, at least of the figures we've looked at so far. I love the deco and the detailing done to his suit. The suit does have sort of a sinister look to his armor. First of all, I like the, the idea that they painted the eyes green as they did, but they also outlined those eyes so they pop a little bit better. The colors between the gold and the red work really well. Uh, I will say, though, of the figures that we've looked at, between this one and the Wolf Guard and the Terminator, I think this one is really painted the nicest. The gold is well, well, handled well. I really like the way they've detailed the shoulder. I mean, obviously, this is based on the original designs of the World Eater Corn Berserker, but I love the, uh, the idea that the shoulder pad actually looks like a skull. You see that right there? I mean, again, like really nicely painted with the gold. There is no bleed other than just this one mark but I think it's supposed to be there. It actually looks like there's an indentation to the otherwise gold that he has on the shoulders. So while I would have normally said there's a little paint imperfection, I think if you're looking at it, that actually cuts right into the plastic. So I, I suppose it's supposed to be there. Figure is nicely detailed. There are a few little areas, like for example, his, his belt, for example, that I don't feel could have used a little bit more color. I mean, it seems like it's pretty basic on gray. The, the chains, at least, are colored differently than the otherwise loincloth that he has underneath. This is all basically done with softer plastic. My only one concern, though, is... I don't know if you guys can actually see this. If you look at the chain that he has on the front of his loincloth, this does move a little bit. But if you see what little there is of plastic, this bends too much, you're going to start to probably warp the plastic, and this probably will just shred this right off. It's going to probably just break. So you want to be careful. You won't have to be careful as much for the loincloth, but I definitely would say be careful of the chain because there's, again, very little plastic attaching this part of the chain to the rest of his belt. 
The detailing is nicely done here. You got some gold there on the ends of his knees, at least on one side, and some really nice gold there on the sides. While he didn't have it on the hands, he has these big protruding spikes on the side. So once again, as you're moving the figure around, you might end up pricking yourself in the process. Now for the figure's articulation, it's pretty much the same as what we've gotten already. So if you've already manhandled the space wolf, that doesn't sound right. You're basically going to be treated to the same level of posability. The head, though, on this one does move basically the exact same way as the Space Wolf. If we remember, remember when we did that review, it wasn't that long ago. There was a ball joint, yes, so that already moves and allows the head to move back and forth. But then there was also this little hinge joint. So there's probably a peg on this side. There's a peg probably on this side that allows the head then to move back and forth. It isn't so much the head that's moving. It's this part. It's like a disc of plastic that moves inside the cavity of his torso. So some additional articulation is afforded there. The arms, of course, do rotate all the way around. The shoulder pad, by the way, seems to be once again attached by a ball joint. It's kind of really hard to get in there and see exactly what's going on, but it definitely is separate from the rest of his shoulders. You can see the way it moves around. The arms do hinge up, but the, unfortunately, the way that the shoulders are designed, there's no way that other than 45 degrees, that's as much as you're going to cut it when it comes to the articulation for the figure's shoulders. Arms still rotate again all the way around, so there's no real issues there. The figure has a swivel in his bicep. He has a double hinge on the elbow, and the only reason I know it's a double hinge is there's a peg right there, and get your finger out of the way. There's a peg right there. So he does have a hinge on paper, but it doesn't seem like it bends any more than what a single hinge would afford him. The figure does have an upper torso ball joint. The figure also has a lower torso ball joint. The benefit also so far from what I've seen with my World Eater Berserker is that the joints on him are really tight. Wasn't the case, unfortunately, when we looked at the Ultramarines Terminator, but it seems to be that on this figure, at least, the joints are all really tight, even like the legs. The legs, you can actually pull off almost a full split. You can take the legs and move them forward, move them back. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh. Once again, you get treated to a double hinge on the knee. Now, unfortunately, by bringing the knee down, it basically reveals everything underneath, but at least they took the time to sculpt as much as they did. So there is a double hinge. It's just a little harder, just because look at the size of the boots on this guy. It's really impossible to get this guy on a double hinge. You're really only just utilizing the hinge that's right here. The top hinge isn't really doing much of anything. Then, of course, he does have an ankle pivot. It does move back and forth this way, and it does also move up and down. Uh, looking at the figure, it does also have a toe articulation. I don't know if he necessarily needed toe articulation, but again, if you guys wanted to have him in a running pose, toe articulation, I'm never going to slouch on the idea that toe articulation can be included with a figure because you never know when you might end up using it. All in all, though, I think it's definitely my favorite of the three figures we've looked at so far. Just reaching off to the side as I'm talking away here. We're going to bring in the other figures that we've already had a look at. I really did like the, the color scheme on all of these. They all kind of represent their own colors on the, on the spectrum of color wheels. Of course, we got on the one side. I got these in reverse order. But we first had a look at the Space Wolves Wolf Guard. Then on the other side, we had a look at the Ultramarines Terminator. And now wrapping up things, at least for right now, the World Eaters uh, Corn Berserker. Favorite, my favorite, at least, of the three figures we've had a look at. Not only is the detailing nicer on the armor itself sort of has sort of a satanic devil look to the armor that they that he has. And he also has some pretty cool accessories as well. The only thing about the accessories, though, is while he can easily wield either one of the plasma pistol and the, and the chain axe on his hands, unfortunately, he has a harder time. Sorry, didn't mean to startle you. He has a harder time, unfortunately, attaching his backpack. It didn't seem to be as much of the case when we looked at the space space guard, like the wolf guard. But I noticed with this one, it just made, I don't know if the peg needed to be a little bit longer because every single time I'm putting on the figure and I start to move him around, not that this is the way I move my figures around, but when I start to move him around, this blasted backpack seems to fall off every single time. Taking a page from the Ultramarines Terminator review, I decided to wrap up things here with the World Eaters Corn Berserker with the figure in a running pose. Now, if you have collected the Warhammer 40,000 figurines at one point, or still continue to do so, probably a lot of times those characters are in running poses, although they don't benefit having any additional posability. With McFarlane now helming when it comes to the Warhammer 40,000 figures, we get the benefit of not only colored looking characters, but we get all the additional posability that goes along with it. I will say, though, one thing about the chain axe is that while the arms are nice and tight, there's a little bit of a looseness there for the wrist. I had it a couple of times already where he, he's carrying around the axe, sure, fine, but the axe ends up drooping down, not because of the arms, not because of the shoulders, but because, again, like the wrists are a little on the looser side. Still, though, I could probably go in there and tighten up things, though I won't have to tighten up a joint necessarily. I may see if I can actually tighten up maybe the part that pegs into the hand, if I maybe make that hole just a little bit, maybe not as open, it might make the wrist maybe a little bit tighter and he'll hold it better than what he is right now.
right now. Speaking of things that aren't holding as well, the backpack isn't so much an issue right now. But when I did notice moving the figure around, that's one of the reasons why I took the backpack off when we we're looking at the figure's posability, because I knew that backpack was going to fall off. The figure is nicely painted, though the backpack is a little bit of a different shade from the rest of the figure. If you can overlook that, still is one of my favorite figures we've looked at so far. So far from the Warhammer 40,000. What do you guys think of the World Eaters Corn Berserker? Let me know down below in the comments section. I know this is a question I've also posed to you guys in the earlier reviews, but what's your favorite faction from Warhammer 40,000? Is it the World Eaters? Is it the Ultramarines? Let me know down below in the comments section. Big thank you once again to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Warhammer 40,000 World Eaters Corn Berserker that we had the chance to have a look in this review. If you guys, though, did enjoy this review, why not throw it a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and would like to stick around for more, definitely we will be looking at some more McFarlane Toys. It may not, though, be Warhammer 40,000, but you know this is the channel that always wants to look at more McFarlane stuff. And in the meantime, if you want to have something to tie you over, popping up at the very end of this video will also be, speaking of McFarlane Toys, other things I've looked at from the company in earlier videos. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.